Sally Hammond Virtual Weber Bullet. Today I want to tell you about a delicious, simple, hot smoked salmon that I recently made in the Weber Smoky Mountain Cooker. This is a whole side of salmon that I purchased at Costco. It was quite expensive. You know, at the time I'm recording this, we're in the middle of COVID times. Everything's expensive. There's shortages on certain types of meat. And that compounded with the fact that the salmon season here on the West Coast of the United States was a little questionable. Um, this salmon that you see here, I purchased at Costco for $16.99 a pound, which is a whole lot. But this was a very large side of salmon weighing 5.18 pounds. But it's a very high quality wild caught salmon and it's perfect for this application. The recipe and the technique I'm using here comes from the May, June 2021 issue of Cook's Illustrated Magazine where they did an article on hot smoked salmon. And I've just adapted that method to the Weber Smoky Mountain Cooker. The method is pretty simple. You wanna simply take this whole side of salmon, at least four pounds in weight, and you wanna cut off the thin tail end, cut off the thin belly section, and then square off the head end of the filet so that you end up with a nice rectangular piece of salmon like you see here in this photo. You want to leave the skin on and remove any pin bones from the salmon. The next step is to cure the salmon. You're going to take one half cup of diamond crystal kosher salt and one half cup of granulated sugar, mix them together, and apply that evenly to the flesh side of the salmon. You want to put that salmon on a wire rack over a rim baking sheet and then evenly apply that cure over the entire flesh side of the salmon. If you want to substitute Morton kosher salt, you'll use six tablespoons of Morton instead of the one half cup of diamond crystal. Now move the salmon to the refrigerator uncovered and let it sit there for four hours to cure. At the end of four hours, the salmon looks like this. You want to lift that wire rack up off the rimmed baking sheet pan and run the salmon filet under cold running water to remove all the excess salt and sugar. After you finish rinsing, pat off the salmon flesh side with paper towels. Just do a quick rinse on that uh, rim baking sheet pan. Return the salmon on the rack to the pan and put it back in the refrigerator uncovered and let that dry in the refrigerator uncovered for at least four hours or up to 20 hours. I let my salmon dry for 19 hours. That was just best for my schedule. Now you'll want to select some mild smoke wood for the salmon. Oftentimes we use alder, but I don't really have that in my inventory right now. So I just used two medium sized chunks of dry apple smoke wood that you see here. Now in preparation for smoking the salmon, you want to prepare a foil sling. This is going to make it easy to get the salmon off and onto the cooking grate. Just take a piece of 18 inch wide heavy duty aluminum foil, pull off a length about 14 inches long, then fold it in half so you end up with a two ply sling that measures seven inches wide and 18 inches long. Spray that lightly with nonstick cooking spray. Place that on the top cooking grate and fold the corners over the edge of the grate just to kind of help secure it to the grate, but mainly just to get those little edges out of the way. So you've got your sling made and you've got it prepared. You have got the salmon in the refrigerator drying. As you approach the end of the drying time, it's time to fire up the Smoky Mountain Cooker. Go ahead and fire up a Weber chimney starter full of Kingsford charcoal right to the tippy top. Get all that charcoal good and hot and dump that into the charcoal chamber. Spread it out evenly. Go ahead and put the water pan into the middle cooking section. Go ahead and put the middle cooking section onto the charcoal bowl. Add some water to the pan. I like to use water here to help keep the temperature under control. It makes it just easier to keep that to a relatively low temperature. Go ahead and open the top vent to 100%. Open the three bottom vents to 50% as a starting point. Now open up the access door and drop those two chunks of smoke wood on top of the hot coals. Close the door and let that fire burn for about five minutes just to let that initial blast of smoke burn off of that uh, smoke wood that you just added. Now back in the kitchen, transfer that salmon skin side down to your prepared foil sling. Remember to give that foil a little shot of nonstick cooking spray before you put the salmon skin side down on the foil. Take that cooking rack outside and put that in the cooker. You're gonna to wanna to maintain a cooker temperature between 225 and 275. 
Your target internal temperature for the salmon is 120 to 125. It will go above that in the thinnest areas, but you're gonna to wanna to measure using an instant read thermometer in the thickest part of the salmon, and you're looking for 120 to 125. Now, as you cook the salmon, you'll see a white substance come to the surface, sometimes through cracks in the flesh, sometimes through the holes that you poke with the instant read thermometer. That white stuff is called albumin. It's proteins that come up out of the meat and they coagulate and solidify at the surface. There's nothing harmful about it. You can eat it if you want, but just for aesthetics, most people want to remove it before serving. You can just take the tip of a sharp knife, just get under it and lift it right off. Now in this photo, you can see the beautiful color that I got on the salmon. I was a little bit concerned because 10 minutes before my finishing time, uh, it didn't really have this nice color, but it came on quickly toward the end. So be patient, look for that internal temp of 120 to 125, and you should get some nice looking salmon like you see here in this photo. You don't have to let it rest very long. Uh, it's not a big, thick, heavy piece of meat. It's not that hot inside to begin with. So in the time it takes you to get it off the cooker and into the house, onto a cutting board, get it sliced and onto a plate, that's all the rest it really needs. So go ahead and enjoy it pretty much as soon as possible once you bring it into the house. Here you can see I've got a nice clean slice of it on a plate with a little bit of lemon and dill just as a garnish. I got this nice clean slice using an electric carving knife. It's a great tip for how to take anything delicate and get a nice clean cut with it. If you don't have an electric carving knife, of course, just use a very, very sharp serrated knife and you should be okay. Leftover salmon like this uh, freezes really well, so don't be afraid to cut whatever you have left over into portions, freeze it solid in the freezer, then transfer it to a food saver bag and vacuum pack it for use later. All you have to do is thaw it gently in the refrigerator and then transfer it to a plate and heat it at like 20% power for you know maybe a minute. Check the temperature with your finger, see if it's warm to the touch. If not, another short period of time for 20 seconds. Keep doing that until the salmon is heated to your liking. It's really delicious even when reheated. So how did it taste? Well, everyone who ate the salmon said it was the best salmon they had ever eaten. And I don't think they were pulling my leg or trying to make me feel good. The key here was to start with a really high quality salmon, nice piece of wild caught king salmon is the way to go here. And treat it very simply, just cure it with salt and sugar. It doesn't make the flesh salty. It doesn't make the flesh candy sweet either. It just really helps to enhance the flavor of what is already a really nice quality piece of fish. And then don't overcook it. Take it to 120 to 125 internal temperature and it'll be nice and moist. Use a modest amount of smoke wood. You don't want to use too much. You don't want to be too strong. You're looking for just a nice kiss of smoke flavor. Nothing too overwhelming. If you have alder, give that a try. If you don't, use something mild like apple. Um, I know that in the Cook's Illustrated article, they use hickory. That seems like that might be too strong to me, but if you like hickory, maybe give that a try. If I were you, I would use apple just like I did. Just a couple of closing items here. First of all, I mentioned earlier to remove the thin end of the salmon, remove the thin edge of the belly and to square off the head end. Make sure that you set aside that salmon for some other use. It's good stuff. Don't throw it away. Find some way to use that elsewhere in the kitchen. Second thing is that remember you're cooking this salmon to temperature. Cook it to 120 to 125 internal. Cooks estimates that it takes between 50 and 70 minutes to achieve that. It took me 60 minutes. I was right in between. So I'll use 50 to 70 as a guide, but make sure that you're using 120 to 125 internal temp as your measure of doneness. I'd have to say that in all the years I've been cooking with the Weber Smoky Mountain Cooker, like 24 years, this has got to be one of the simplest and, uh, and most delicious things I've ever cooked in the Smoky Mountain Cooker and gotten such positive feedback about it from my guests. So I really encourage you to try to get your hands on a really nice piece of wild caught king salmon and follow this simple recipe. I think you'll really enjoy it. Well, that's it for now. Thank you for watching this video. If you would like more details, if you'd like to see, for example, a chart of my cooking times and temps, my vent settings from the cook of this piece of salmon, you'll find that in the simple hot smoked salmon article on the Virtual Weber Bullet website. I'll put a link to that in the description of this video. Uh, as always, I appreciate you very much. Thank you for uh, watching this video and all the other ones I have. Please like and subscribe to them. It helps other people find them. Until next time, take care, everybody. Bye.
拜拜。